Hello and welcome back to my course on AP Computer Science Principles. Today we're going to continue our talk of compression by looking at this lossless data compression Khan Academy. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Okay, first question. Byte pair encoding is a compression algorithm that replaces repeated pairs of characters in a string with a character that isn't in the data and creates a table of replacement mappings. Couple of things. String is just any sort of word or letter that needs to be taken down letter for letter. So anything that's a word, we call it a string in computer science. There are other things other than words that are also strings, but for now, just keep in mind, words are strings when it comes to coding. Okay, here's a quote from Dr. Seuss. Think left and think right, and think low and think high. Oh, the things you can think up if only you try. Pretty sure I'm not going to get in trouble for reading that on YouTube. Which of the following character pairs would the algorithm replace? So we're looking for a pair of letters that shows up a lot because the more it shows up, the more we compress it when we replace those two characters with just one character. Note that there are two answers to this question. Well, automatically I think that TH is gonna be one of the big ones, right? Think low, think high, the thinks you can think up. Yeah, that's, that's a big one. Um, FT really only seems to show up in the word left, so I don't think that's really it. IN, well, IN is also part of the word think, right? So it shows up an awful lot, so that's probably the right next one. In fact, we could probably just have one symbol to represent the word think, and that would take care of a lot of the work for us. How about NL? I don't really see a whole lot in the way of NLs. In fact, I'm not sure that I see any at all. So yeah, TH and IN are, of these four options, the best ones. Johan loves old computers, so he challenges himself to build a retro video game, for one, and figure out how to squeeze all of its graphics into the computer's limited storage. To save space, Johan decides to use a run length encoding with black and white graphics. RLE is a data compression technique that replaces runs, sequences of bits with the same value, with a number representing the length of the run. So in other words, that four at the beginning there doesn't represent a single color, it means the same color four times. Here's the RLE for one of the graphics, a letter for the start screen. RLE schemes often start each row with the number of white pixels, but he chose to start each row with the number of black pixels because most of his graphics start with black pixels. So what this is saying is on that top row, there is four black pixels followed by one white pixel. Same deal in that second row, one black, three white, one black. I think I know what this is gonna be, but let's go ahead and draw it out just to see. Now, if you look at the shape of that, you can actually probably get a pretty good idea of what the letter is. I don't know if that's coincidence or not. Anyway, let's give this a shot. So it starts out with one, two, three, four black, one white. Yes, I know pixels are squares and I'm not doing them perfectly in order. Again, work with me. I'm sure we'll figure it out by the end. One black, one, two, three white, and one black. Again, one black, one, two, three white, and one black. One, three, one. I don't know about you, but that looks like an R to me. Moving on. In natural languages, there are big differences in what letters are the most common across words. In the Spanish language, the letter E, or A, I suppose, is the most common, occurring 12.2% of the time. And the letter K, K, is the least common, occurring only 0.01% of the time. That's why the Huffman encoding algorithm can help to compress natural language documents. Huffman coding reduces the amount of bits required to represent data by choosing new bit codes for each source symbol and choosing short codes for the most frequent source symbols. 
Okay, not sure exactly what that means at the moment, but let's go ahead and read on and see if we can figure it out. Here's a Spanish word encoded with Huffman coding. These are the codes for the letters in the word, a subset of the table of codes for all the letters. I see, so it looks like the most common letter, in this case A, only has three bits in its bit code, as opposed to C, which I assume is much less common, has five bits in it. That way you're, you're minimizing the amount of space that each word requires by taking the most common letters and assigning them to smaller strings of bits. So now we're supposed to decode the word according to the bit codes in the table. So it looks to me like the first letter is 11011. I just started highlighting until I found one of these four. Then after that, I see 011. That looks like an A, so we're at CA. After that, I see 1111. That's O. And then 1110 is S, so I see C A O S. No problem. Up next. Byte pair encoding is a compression algorithm that replaces the most common pairs of characters in a string with a character that isn't in the data and creates a table of replacement mappings. That's the one that we did before using both um, Taylor Swift's song in my last video as well as uh, one of the earlier problems on this very video. So what this question is really asking is which one of these words has the most pairs of letters? Because each of those pairs of letters will be compressed down to one symbol, so the one that would benefit the most, I believe, would be bookkeeper. I see one, two, three, four, five, six, so I see three pairs here, only one pair in ball, only two in zookeeper and only two in balloons. No problem. And that's it for lossless compression. Please go ahead and put any questions you have in the comments. I'll do my best to get to them and I'll see you in the next video.